This is going to be a short video on an important topic, finding the apex of a table saw blade or the center of its crown. This is important because it will make it easier to measure your blade's precise height for certain types of non-through cuts and joinery. If you take the time to find and permanently mark the center of your blade somewhere on the saw, it will save you loads of time and frustration down the road. There are several ways to do this, but I'm going to focus on what I think are the easiest methods. And I recommend you watch this short video all the way to the end because I'm going to have a lot of tips in it. The first is to simply raise your blade to its full height and mark the locations of the front and back teeth. It's okay to rotate the blade so that you align the tip of the tooth with the surface of the insert. Now measure between those two points and split the difference. A center finding ruler makes tasks like these precise without doing any math. I'll link to one of these handy tools below if you need one, but you could do this with a regular ruler. I like to permanently scribe that center line across my throat insert for future reference, but before you do, it may be worth doing one more test. This time, raise your blade only an inch or so and repeat the same marking process. See if the center point falls in the same position at both of these blade heights. If it doesn't, that means your table saw's arbor doesn't raise precisely straight up and down. If the difference is less than about an eighth of an inch between your center points, I wouldn't worry too much about it for the purpose of locating the center and measuring your blade height. But if the forward position of the blade changes significantly as you raise or lower it, then you won't be able to count on using this fixed center point to measure your blade height. Instead, you might just use the old combination square trick, where you set the square to the height you want, then carefully keep the end of the rule flat on the insert as you raise the blade up to meet the body of the square. What if the center of the blade is consistent at all blade heights, but your insert can move forward or back within the throw opening? Well, in that case, you have a larger problem, and I recommend fixing your insert so it stays tight within the throat opening and doesn't present a safety hazard while you cut. One way to do that might be to put layers of tape around the edges to take up that extra slot. Another option is to make a custom insert that is properly fitted to your saw and perhaps also includes a splitter to help prevent kickback. I'll put a link below this video to a tutorial we made some time back that will walk you through that process. In it, you will also find a clever tip for shimming a throat insert flush with the top of a saw. Now, if you're starting with a fresh, uncut insert, finding the center is really simple. Just turn on the saw and very slowly raise the blade until it just begins to emerge. You're not likely to get a singular tiny point because the fibers are going to break in a little bit of a length, but you can easily narrow it down enough to mark the center by eye. Then permanently scribe it across the insert for future reference. If you like that way of locating the center, you can do it even if you aren't installing a new insert. Lock your rip fence a couple inches from the blade. Then clamp or use double-sided tape to attach a piece of wood over the blade slot. Now slowly raise the spinning blade until it begins to emerge. Then use a square to carry that point over to your fence and across its face. Incidentally, you can scribe the center point on the fence alone and not on the throat insert if you wish. Since the fence always locks in the same forward position regardless of the distance from the blade, you can just slide the fence up next to the blade and use that mark to find the blade center whenever you wish to set its height. Or you can transfer the mark from the fence face to the throat insert with the square. Marking the fence is also a good way to transfer a center point from one insert to another without going through the whole process again. Why would you have multiple inserts for one table saw? That's a good subject for a future video. See you next time. BitsBits.com is a small company that takes top quality white side router bits and adds their high-tech Astra coating to reduce friction, heat, and wear, perhaps doubling the life of the bit. They have a growing selection of bits for all woodworking applications, and they are the place for CNC router bits. They are really worth checking out, so give them a look at the link below this video.